Last year, I showed a very basic concept of procedural generation, and I used this to create a short pirate game. Now I know a lot more about procedural generation and a lot more about video editing. That video was a mess. But I want to revisit this and show you how you can actually start adding some procedural generation into some really small game concepts. Let's get started. I'm going to start off really, really simple, and we're just going to create just a water and a grass tile. So I'm going to go to water first, click, and I need to resize this to be the size of the tiles that I want. And what I recommend is start with something like five by five. The smaller you go, the more detail you're going to have, but it does mean it's going to take more time to load. If you go bigger, it will load quicker, but you don't get as much detail. So that's our water tile done. We're going to insert a new object, scroll down, and we're going to grab a grass tile. Click anywhere, I'm going to find a green, that'll do, and just hit the X almost, we just need to resize this first, 5x5, five five. and just hit done. So we've got our two tiles there, we'll just place them at the top, it doesn't really matter at this stage. Final thing we need before we can start actually randomizing our levels, is we're just going to scroll down and grab the advance random. This is what we're going to be using to actually generate the levels. Now onto our event sheet. So first thing I'm going to do is add a new event. This is going to be a system requirement and it's going to be on start of layout. Now the first thing I'm going to do is just add an action. Go to our advanced random and we're actually going to set the seed. Now if you've ever played something like Minecraft, you know that a seed, if you enter the same one again, you get the exact same world. Our seed is doing the exact same thing. So if I was to put in the word hello, Every time I run this code, I'll get the exact same layout of islands. However, we want this to be random. So instead, what we're going to do is write str to generate a string. And we're just going to take the random numbers between one and pick a number. So this will give us lots and lots of different possibilities of what islands could be. And they'll be random each time. Now we can actually start creating the columns for our grid. So to do this, we're going to right click on the green arrow here and just add in a sub event. There's going to be a system requirement. Scroll down until you see repeat. And the amount of time we're going to repeat is going to be our layout width. And we use the layout width and it's going to type in a number. So if you change the size of your layout, it still works. And we're just going to divide that by five. Five being the size of our tiles. What we want to do is store what column we're currently on. So to do that, we're just going to right click on the side here and just add in a local variable. I'm going to call this local variable X. And for our action, we're just going to go to system, set value, and X, we're going to change to the loop index, just like so. Next, we also need to do the rows. So we're going to right click on the green circle once more and just add in a blank sub event. And for this, we're going to go back to system, back to repeat. I'm going to do the exact same thing, but this time we're going to do the layout heights and divided by the tile height, which again is five. We can then add our action, and there's gonna be a system action. And all we're gonna do is create the object, and the object we want to create is water. And for this, we're gonna use the X variable, times by our tile size, which is five. And Y, we're gonna use the loop index, which will be the loop of the inner loop that we've got, the one that does the layout height, and also times that by five. What this will do now if we run it is we'll create a water tile on every single spot, basically just turning our whole map to blue, just like so. Nothing fancy yet. Next, we're going to add an event and we're going to go to water and we're just going to check if the water has been created. And at this point, we've created thousands of water tiles, so it definitely has been created. And for each one that's been created, we're going to do a check. So we're going to right click on this green arrow first and add in a sub event. And then we're going to go to system, compare two variables, and we're going to use the advanced random library dot. And there's lots of different options depending on what type of game you're making. If you're making a platformer game, whatever, we're going to use classic 2D to generate a 2D sort of noise map. And it's going to take in two values. The first one's going to be the water's X position, and the second one's going to be the water's Y position. And this will do this for every single water tile. What we're going to do is see if it's less than or equal to, and then here we can enter any number between 0 and 1. The bigger the number that we enter, the more grass will replace the water, 
the smaller the number, the fewer islands you have essentially. So we're just going to add action. We're going to take our water. And the first thing we need it to do is actually just spawn another object. That object is going to be our grass. And then once we spawn the grass, we have no use for that water tile anymore. So we can go to water and then destroy. So finally, you might have noticed I've added a keyboard. You don't need to do this, but I'm just going to press the R key to reset the layout just so we can see these maps sort of randomizing each time. This is really good if you want to test your code, um, but again, it's not required. So here's what our map looks like. And every time that I hit R on my keyboard, it's going to re-randomize that map and give me a different layer. Now, this is what I did originally in my tutorial. However, this is quite basic. We want to add in the extra details such as beaches, mountains, etc. So let's have a look at how we can do that now. First thing we're going to do our grass and we're just going to right click and we're going to clone it. So we've got grass two. I'm going to clone it once more for grass three. Now we'll start with grass one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make it a color very close to our water. So I'm going to go for this sort of light blue and it's going to be the edge of the shore. For grass two, I'm going to make this a beach. So I'm going to take sort of a yellow color. I want to go quite a pastel color. So I'll go a bit lighter on the side and change that to yellow just like so. And what I recommend is also just renaming these tiles as well now. So grass, I'm going to rename to shore. Grass two, I'm just going to rename to beach. And grass three, technically is just grass. So I'm just going to rename that to grass without the three on the end. So first thing I'm going to do is instead of spawning the shore, we're going to spawn the grass. Then we can now copy and paste this code here. And the only change we need to make to this code is first, instead of spawning grass, we need to spawn a beach. Instead of 0.37, we need a bigger number. So what I recommend is 0.41. And then we also need an else statement. Now to get an else statement, just right click and add an else statement and then just drag it up and delete the previous line of code. And finally, we can do one more time just for the shores. Now we don't want the shores to be very big, so we're just going to change that number by one and change it from beach to shore. And let's see what this looks like. And there we go. We've got our islands created. So you see that we've got grass in the middle, we've got beach around the edge, and then we've got these sort of light shores as well. So let's take this a step further. And as well as having multiple parts of the land, and again, if we wanted more stuff beyond the grass, we'll just have another number, say three, two, would be our mountains, or even smaller than that. And you could use this to start adding random items to your islands as well. Let's focus on the water this time. So I'm just gonna clone our water. I'm just gonna right click and edit the animation. And I just want a darker variation of our water. Now I'm gonna go quite dark, just so it stands out on the video. And what we want to do is actually spawn some deep parts of the ocean. Just like before, we're just gonna copy and paste our code. We're just gonna up this value to be something a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna go for seven. Again, I've played around and tested these values, which why they seem a little bit random, but they're not, I assure you. And then we're just gonna spawn in water two. And again, feel free to play around with these numbers. Again, the closer they are together, it means the smaller that is. So again, the fact that shore and beaches are quite close together means you get very small shores. The fact that there's a big gap between beach and grass, which means you get a lot of grass. So now we've got this water tube being spawned. Let's see how that affects our map. So you can now see that we've got these dark spots around the island, which look really good. And I can randomize this a couple of times to give us a different look. Now, every time we randomize, you'll notice that we roughly get the same amount of coverage of islands to water each time. And this isn't by accident. It's using the numbers that we've put in. But back if we want a map that generates with fewer islands or even more islands and less water, this just gives us more variation on how our maps look. So it's actually a really easy change to add in. So first I'm going to do is right click and add a global variable. And for this variable, we're going to call it island gap. And it's going to be a number, doesn't matter what the number is. Now on our start of layout, we're just going to add an action system. And we're just going to set the value of island gap. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the random function. Now what I recommend to begin with, again, these numbers you can play around with loads, but minus 0.2 comma 
and then 0 0.1. Now you can adjust these and make these bigger or smaller, which will adjust the gaps massively. But we'll start with these numbers first. Now that we've got the island gap variable set up, we need to go to every line of code that we've done, these four here. And all we're going to do is take this 0 0.37 and add the island gap. Now again, if we make these numbers smaller, we get fewer islands. If we make these numbers bigger, we get more islands. So sometimes we'll get more islands now, sometimes we'll get less islands now. And again, this is just changing the way our map looks. Now the way this is set up is not linked to the seed. So if you are going to get the user type in the same seed, this would generate separately. So you'd ask them to put this as a separate number in as well. But you can see we've got a lot less islands now. If we restart, we've got slightly more islands. And where we go, we've got loads of islands this time. So you can see this is a different method of just getting more variety. So final changes we're going to make is we're going to adjust the water and we're going to add in a player. So let's start with the water first. I'm going to go back to the layout and I'm just going to zoom out slightly. And what I want is non-static water. I want the water to be flowing and moving. So the easiest way to do that is insert a new object, go to sprites, and I'm going to call this water background. Click anywhere, and I'm going to fill it in with the rough color that you want your water to be. That'll do. Notice I'm not resizing this one. I'm just going to keep it the size it is. And I'm going to make sure this fills our entire layout and even spills over past our layout. It's really important. We're then going to add an effect. And the effect that we're looking for is the water effect. It's quite far down. And double click. Now, there's lots of properties with this. And again, it's all about finding the ones that work for you. But I quite like putting these numbers quite low. And if we change the delta to about 40 and reflectivity about 200. So lots of stuff that you can change, but this will give you nice flowing water with a bit more depth to it. Now, if you run your code now, you won't see this water because we're actually creating all our tiles on top of this. So we need a way to actually delete the original water tiles, just leaving our islands and the darker spots of water remaining. So how do we achieve this? So first we need to do is add in a new global variable. And this is gonna be called layout created. There's gonna be a check to say, have we finished creating all the tiles? If so, we can start removing the old water tiles. And then we can also start adding our player in and enemies to the map or any of our items as well. So we're gonna set that to false. We're then gonna come down and we're going to right click on this green arrow here and just add in a sub event. This is going to be system. I'm just going to compare a variable and the variable we want to compare is X. Now we want to use the round function and we're going to use the layout width divided by five, close the bracket. And finally, we just need to minus one. This is just because loops start at zero. So we're going to account for that by just minusing the one at the end. Essentially, all this is doing is saying, have we done every single column and generate the tiles for those columns? If so, we're just going to simply set the Boolean layout created to true. Moving on to our events, then we can then just add a quick event that just says, is Boolean set layout created? I'd also recommend just because you can get some weird results, if not, depending on what you're doing with this, is just add the trigger once while true. Finally, to delete the water that we've got, we're just going to add in a blank sub event or a sub event. And for this one, we're going to use the system once more. Scroll down and we want the for each option. And it's just going to be for each of the water tiles. Then we can just take those water tiles and now destroy them so they no longer exist. This also frees up a huge amount of objects in your game because you're generating such a huge amount of water that it's just generating lots of objects. So deleting them is quite good as well. So let's preview this now. And you can see that we've got this nice flowing water in the background. So again, it's just adding that little bit of extra depth to your game. It's quite subtle. You might not even be able to pick it up properly in this video, but hopefully you can. Um, but again, different effects makes the game a little bit nicer. Final thing then, let's add our player. Now you can see on the map that we've got a lot of these dark spots. We're actually going to pick one of these dark spots at random to spawn our player in. 
That's because most of the time these dark spots are away from islands and quite isolated. You can sometimes get it where they're right next to the islands, which is a pain, but this is the easiest way to put the player in a spot that's not on land. So we're just gonna right click on this line here and add a sub event, go to system, scroll down, and we've got pick random instance. So we're gonna pick a random version of water two, random tile for water two, and then we can actually move our player there. Now I've just realized I haven't got a player, so let's do that quickly now. So back onto the main layout, just insert a new object, scroll down, sprite. I'm gonna create a boat. And here's my boat. Make sure when you've created your boat, it's facing to the right. If not, some of your behaviors don't work properly. And once you're happy, just hit the X and we'll just place our boat just somewhere out of the way next to our tiles. In terms of our boats, if you want to actually explore this map, the behaviors that I recommend adding on are the scroll to behavior and the car behavior. I also recommend changing the car behavior stats to be much lower, so 150 and the rest are fine to be fair. And then finally, once we pick our random instance of water two, we can now actually use our boats. So boat. We've got one already, so we'll just set the position of that boat to water two's dot X position. And again, this will be the random version of water two that we've selected and its Y position. Finally, because the boat was already there, we should just move it to the top of all these tiles so we can see it. And that's it. You should now have a randomly generated game. Now, one thing I want to point out with this is the size of this map is based on your layout size. If you increase your layout size, you'll get a much bigger map. It will take longer to load. This is because we're not taking the use of chunks at the moment. Chunks, as you might know from Minecraft, means that only part of the world is loaded at a time, and as you move into new areas, it gets rid of old chunks, loads in the new ones. However, this is far more complicated. Oh, there we go. Barely any islands at all. This is far more complicated, and I'll leave a link to a video that shows you how to add this. However, it's something I'm still learning and don't feel comfortable enough to make a video on. However, this is still fantastic to play around with and you can still do a lot with this concept. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have, like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.